We're going to go over how to make this simulation in Cinema 4D today. We're going to cover every aspect of the process and it'll be a little bit longer. So uh, I hope you can watch the whole thing. Um, we'll start by opening our Quixel Bridge app and going into the export settings to change the model we export to Cinema 4D. So in this case, I went with the high poly source um, because it's the most detailed and uh, you know, it looks, it looks the best, I think. Um, but when we look at the geo for those, it's very, very high poly. So we're going to want to create proxy geometry for our, our uh, bullet solver. If we tried to use those uh, high poly source objects, the solver would take a very long time and it, and it wouldn't be great for just um, developing the look of the simulation ra rapidly. We can use that proxy geometry as a guide for our high res geometry. So what we'll do is we'll throw each uh, each of our high high poly objects into a volume builder, volume mesher, and then remesher so that we can get uh, nice even uh, low poly versions of the objects. And we'll do that for each of them. And you can see uh, how well they represent the actual geometry as well, right? Uh, because they're inside of it um, so you can adjust that a little bit but is if it's pretty close it'll be fine we'll make the high-res geometry a child of its proxy geometry for each of them and then we'll adjust them in the scene to just uh, set them into a place we want for our simulation to start uh, make sure you only move the proxy geometry so that the high-res geometry will move with it so those will be our those rocks will be our main uh, our main rigid bodies, and then we'll also add secondary rigid bodies using a cloner with spheres. So we'll just set up a basic grid uh, sphere cloner, and then we'll add um, some randomness to the position and scale to add a little bit more interest. We'll also randomize the color for use in our shaders later on. When, when you're doing any kind of simulation, you want to try to avoid any initial intersections. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, we're going to randomize the position, but use the push apart um, to, to try to avoid any initial uh, interpenetrations between the objects, because that'll just that'll make our our sim act act weird or, or not work in some cases. So try to avoid that. Then we'll add our rigid body tags to our cloner and to our proxy geometry. Uh, objects but when we play you can see something weird is going on uh, the high-res geometry is colliding with the proxy geometry so we have to change the inherit tag on each of the rigid body tags to none so that the uh, high-res geometry is not being considered um, we'll also turn off gravity we don't need that in this case we're gonna have all these objects just be colliding with each other um, and then we're going to get started on setting up forces for the simulation. So turbulence is great to add some variable motion, uh, kind of noisy, uh, unpredictable motion. Um, and our field force will be the force that is sucking everything in towards the center. So when we combine those two, we'll kind of have uh, a turbulent suction -y force applying to everything which you can see. With the field force you will need to add a field or some object that uh, it can work through. It doesn't work on its own if there's no field uh, or object in there. So be aware of that. Um, make sure you drop it into that field section uh, in the object. Uh, there's also a another field section, but if you put stuff in there, it won't work uh, initially. You have to make sure it's in that field section. We can we can test out other forces such as the rotation um, force and adjusting our turbulence, but I think we we'll, we just kind of want something that's like moving around that center point with some noisy kind of chaotic motion, but not too not too crazy where it's it's getting pulled so far away from that center. Um, it's always good to organize your project as you go along. If you, you know, if you can remember to, to do that, it'll make everything easier as you're going through and editing, or if anyone else needs to look at your project, um, 
and you know naming your layers making a, some kind of visual hierarchy will make your project much easier to to access and to navigate for you or anyone else so we have our our rocks we have our spheres that are rigid body collisions so at, at later on in the simulation we want kind of like a, an outward explosion and it's going to be a sphere that starts off very small and then when we want the explosion to happen we're just going to animate the radius like you can see and so that'll collide with everything and push it outward so it's a pretty easy way to to do that effect if you if you want to um, you can see some of the uh, rigid body spheres are still being sucked back towards the center so we'll fix that by animating the field force strength um, and we'll just set up our render camera so it's a you know we have a a better idea of what it's going to look what is our scene is going to look like when we're uh, when we're rendering it so another thing we want to do is we want right when that explosion happens we want kind of like a laser to shoot through and kind of uh, start off that that explosion so what we're going to do is we're going to use a an end side to make a straight line straight through the scene uh, right through kind of the where the simulation will mainly be happening and we'll we'll sweep it with a circle and then we'll use the uh, start and end growth parameters of the sweep object to uh, animate our laser moving across the scene really quickly so we want it to correspond with where the explosion happens so that's where the sphere is expanding so we'll just we'll just set our our uh, start and end growth um, animations to around that same area we're going to need to tweak it you can see at first it's uh it's pretty slow we want it to be faster so we're going to go in the uh into the dope sheet and um just just uh select our sweep object and then shrink down the the animation uh, time so it's you know really fast we want it to be a really fast moving object through the scene um, so that looks good um, for now that'll work for now okay so we have our forces set up we have our our scene uh, looking the way we kind of want to initially um, and now let's fix the field force by animating it over time. So we're just going to turn it off after that explosion so everything continues to uh, be sent outward. The turbulence will still be affecting the simulation, so there's still a little bit of uh, chaotic motion even after the explosion. Um, and then we can, uh, we can bake our, our scene at this point. I think you know things are looking okay for us to do that. Um, except for we forgot one thing um, we want to add slow-mo to after where the impact happens so we'll clear the cache we just we just baked and then we're gonna animate the time scale parameter of the bullet solver so you go into your project settings press control D bullet general animate the time scale we want it to coincide with the explosion again so right after the explosion happens boom slow-mo looks nice and uh, we'll, we cached it again so we can kind of scrub through and, and see how it looks and everything and it'll also play back really fast um, and so we have our simulation pretty much set up uh, we have our um, our laser set up so an another thing you can do after you've cached an RBD sim you can add a cloth or balloon or soft body sim on top of that 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 you can uh, configure to collide with uh, with the cloth and, and balloon sim because it, you know it would make physical sense if the the rigid bodies you know were colliders with the with the cloth and soft bodies so it is a one way interaction so the the cloth and soft bodies aren't aren't affecting the rigid body sim but it kind of makes some physical sense you know uh, the, the the rigid the soft bodies wouldn't have as much effect on these hard dense objects so it's not it's not going to be physically accurate but it's a cool way to combine these two systems um, and we can give that a try we're just going to set up a basic radial cloner with some spheres and we have to add our our cloth um, our cloth simulation colliders to the rigid body objects that are already baked 
um, and then we'll add the balloon tag, you know, to our our cloner and adjust some of the properties so that we get some some nice uh, behavior. And we're also going to need to increase uh, the the attraction force with another field force uh, turned up. For some reason, the the cloth simulation system needs a higher a higher strength to the field force to get it to to be attracted towards the center, like with the rigid bodies. Okay, so we can get some visual feedback on how that's looking. We can see our rigid bodies are definitely interacting with our with our balloon objects, um, and you know we'll just we'll just tweak some of the the parameters, and also uh, we can try to add the same slow motion to the cloth, you know, or or soft body simulation as well. Um, at, at, at a certain point, you know, all of that is really just a matter of spending time developing the look to what you want it to be. Um, you know, you can tweak parameters endlessly. This is just to, you know, give you some information on how, you know, you can quickly iterate on these ideas and, and get these systems to interact in, in, in interesting ways. Um, so... Yeah, the I'm just I'm just kind of playing around with some settings. You can see if we make them, you know, stretch more stretchy and squishy, we we do get some uh, some penetration of the rigid bodies through the cloth uh, soft body objects. So, you know, in this case, it might not it might not matter, or maybe you know maybe that is something an effect you want to to create, but. Um, you know, to have, if you wanted to get rid of that, you know, you could revert the settings back to where we had them initially and just play around with it to achieve the effect that you are looking for. Um, because there's a there's a lot uh, a lot to explore, and you can iterate very quickly in these systems. The simulations are very very fast, I think, um, uh, depending on your your system. But I think overall, it's it's pretty well optimized. So you know, tweaking things and, you know, working with, uh, if you're, if you're optimizing your, your simulation objects properly, it, it shouldn't be, uh, terribly time consuming. And then, so we'll, we will cache out our, uh, our soft bodies as well. So we have our whole scene cached out, um, and retimed and everything. So we have our, our explosion, our slow motion, um, and everything is looking good on the simulation side. So, we can move into the look development and lighting and rendering. Um, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to we're going to make it, you know, look nice and have some nice lighting and everything. So, um, yeah. So one of the first things we need to do is hide our proxy geometry from showing up in the renderer. So if you were to hide it from the renderer uh, in the object view, it would hide uh, its its child object, which is our high res geometry as well. So we need to do it with our redshift render tag, turn off the visibility of the um, proxy geometries, and then turn on the visibility of the uh, high res geometry with a uh, also with a redshift render tag. We'll turn off our soft bodies for now, just to simplify the scene when we're doing our look development for now. Um, so we can see our, our mega scans rocks. They come in with a material. If you go into your preferences and rend redshift render settings and turn off node materials for presets, then it will work. It will, uh, it will come in to Cinema 4D with its material all uh, created for you. So just remember to do that when you're importing them. You can turn it off afterwards, which which I do because I prefer the new, uh, the new material uh, system. And on all of them, we we I've just put a color correct node to get rid of the saturation, all of the color. I just want grayscale rocks, um, and kind of match them all to a similar a similar shade. Um, and yeah, I mean you can tell like okay, yeah, they look they're looking pretty good. We'll add our uh, emission shader to our laser. That's just a really basic um, shader with just uh, a strong emission coming from it in a kind of an orange tinted light. And then the next thing will be our uh, 
our spheres, our, our rigid body spheres. So we're going to use the color, use the data node, and we're going to bring in the MoGraph color, um, which is randomized. So we can use that to have uh, random random colors using a, a color ramp um, and moving the knots around to where we want the blending to happen. We can also use a pipe this out to just a black and white ramp if we want to um, if we want to combine different materials rather than just having different colors of of the same material. So we'll we'll test that out just so we can kind of visualize what that what that would look like. Um, so we'll do like a a metal material and a you know the the colorful kind of plastic material. Okay, so we can see that that looks cool with two different materials on them. And then with the first one, we can also make use of the the color ramp again if we want, you know, if we still want different colors on that first material. For uh, for whatever reason, the, uh, you know, the, the color range is shifted, uh, is shifted very much towards being gray. So if we add a color change range, we can just modify the range of that ramp before it goes in and... Uh, you know, have a better a better uh, spread of, of colors between the two. And so we can we can see what our, our scene looks like throughout different moments of the simulation. And then uh, things are yeah, things are looking good. So now we'll let's add a, a background and kind of create the the background and lighting of our scene. So we're just going to use a plane with a solid dark color for our background. And then we will add a, an area light to the bottom to create a gradient on that. And uh, one thing to, to keep in mind is um, if you have any other lights in your scene other than the one pointed at the background, you want to exclude the background from being affected by those. So this will help us just create a nice background gradient for our scene. Um, you can see it's kind of it's kind of washed out and doesn't look very um uh very con the the contrast isn't very strong so we need to remember to exclude that background from the other lights in the scene like the the hdri um and now it looks you know it looks much better um so we can skip through check out how it looks okay cool let's uh let's just play around a little bit with the post effects um, just dial, you know, dial some of these things in, uh, change the, the lighting and contrast and we can apply a, you know, a lot. And for this kind of, uh, you know, effect with the laser, you can add the bloom in the post effects or, you know, later on in your, whatever, uh, post processing software you use, like after effects, I generally tend to do it after the fact, um, just to try to avoid banding. Um, it's, it's hard with, with bloom and with these smooth gradients, it's hard to avoid banding, but you can if if you try to um, export with higher bit depths, and also um, you can add grain and things like that in the in the post processing section of of your workflow. Uh, yeah, let's let's shade these uh, these soft bodies as well. I'm just going to use a uh, transmissive material. Um, with almost no roughness and change the color a little bit to kind of match the color scheme of the of the scene a little bit better you can see th you know the scene's starting to get a little crowded and and crazy um in my example you know i, I chose not to include the uh the soft bodies you know it just seemed a little chaotic but i want to include it just to just to show you know how we can you know use both systems and see if we can you know make it make it look look reasonably nice um render settings nothing nothing crazy special i'm just using the you know the automatic sampler the secondary uh, gi engine is brute force and i'm you know denoising it um and make sure in your in your uh, preferences that you have only the gpu in use if you have your cpu on it can slow down uh, you're rendering quite a bit, even if your GPU is still on. 
So yeah, let's continue to adjust lighting. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, mention that I used in the the project uh, that I based this on is um, I used a uh, gobo from this awesome artist that is a set of animated chromatic uh, textures. So I used that on a spotlight to get some of those, you know, strange looking light shapes that kind of look like caustics from a pool or something. Um, so that's kind of one of the additional details I wanted to include. And I'll, I'll put a link for those in the description of the video if you're interested. Uh, you you will have to purchase them, but I, I think it's, you know, it's a cool resource and it's very reasonably priced. So uh, take a look at those if you're interested. And so, yeah, I spent a little time just trying to uh, dial in the look of that spotlight uh, using a target tag towards um, a null that I have placed at the origin. I find using the target tag with lights is often a, a much easier way to um, to get them to uh, behave how you how you want them to and move them around the scene rather than just manually doing it. Um, we'll also adjust kind of the lighting from our our dome light and then add a an actual uh, an actual key light uh, to the to the setup. Um, you know, we're, our lighting's not gonna, not gonna look amazing, not gonna look perfect, but we'll just, uh, we'll just make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and again, any of these new lights we add, we have to exclude them, uh, exclude our background from being affected by them. So one thing I, I often like to do with uh, some of my scenes, my, my, my lights in the scene is to turn down the spread um, on the area light that makes it a harder edge to the shape of the light. Um, and I, often it looks more directed and interesting to me. Um, and yeah, let's change the color of that emissive material to kind of blend better with the scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and again, like, you know, it, it looks pretty cool. It's not it's not perfectly set up at this point, but, you know, for for what we can accomplish quickly in Cinema 4D and Redshift with the simulation and rendering toolkit, I think this is really cool. Um, and I think you can have a lot of fun and explore a lot of interesting ideas using, you know, all the tools we talked about. Um, and yeah, if you want to smooth out the spheres that we use for the soft body and rigid body, just add a render tag with the tessellation enabled and that will smooth them out for render time. But other than that, yeah, I think that's where we'll end the tutorial and I hope you learned some interesting concepts or information from this and um, yeah, feel free to show me anything that you create with uh, following along. I'd love to see it, um, you know follow me on Instagram or whatever social media or, you know, get in touch with me. Um, and, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.